All right. Now it's time for the go fast stuff. Areas to brace the body up. Now, the T-body was graced with a rather stiff chassis to begin with. Uh, however, when you start cranking up horsepower and putting V8s in them, you will start twisting them up a little bit, especially if you start getting some traction. Um, there are a few key areas in the nose that need bracing, depending on what you're doing with the car, because drag racing is going to entail a little bit different or a little bit less bracing in the nose than as something that's going to see, say, high-speed autocross. Um, but uh, it also would be a little bit different than something that might rally cross. However, the bracing is very similar for all three, um, and it allows you to allows you to put the front of the car through a little bit more abuse. Also, um, frame tying the car. Now, the car technically has a chassis built into that unibody. Uh, it's just not visible. So, uh, give me a minute and I'll show you. Right. What now, referring back to the book, we've all seen the frame rails that are in the car that are visible. And I'll show you right here in the hatch on both sides. And then, of course, the visible part of the visible parts of the frame rails in the front right here. And you can see how they taper down and underneath the car. And if you were to follow these under the car, they go all the way around and into the rocker panels, all the way down the length of the car. The rear frame rails go from the bumper down under the seat. And they stop right about here underneath the seat brace. You can pretty much see the outline of it. Now, this is not a traditional frame rail as if it was a body on frame kind of car. This is your typical unibody car. So while they are frame rails, they are not frame rails in the sense that these are not thick rails made specifically to be the structure of the chassis. These are formed in the floor of the car there's layers of sheet steel here that make them up so they're not exactly the strongest as if you were to consider like the frame underneath my truck uh, however because this is a unit construction uh, they only needed to be strong in these areas front and back to do this car's job there's some other structures through the side of the car and the roof that keep it from twisting up under normal conditions. However, if you start playing with these cars and you start getting real serious, there's definitely some areas up here that need to be addressed. One is make sure all of your frame rails are solid. Um, because, again, these are not traditional frame rails. They're made up of layers of sheet steel. They are typically thicker than, say, your floorboards. However, this is just the inner side of this frame that makes up three quarters of it. The other quarter of it is just sheet metal on this side. And, boy, does it rust out through here on these cars. This side's no exception on this one. And you see, this is usually how they get. But there's the frame rail. And you see, even as rusty as this car is, the frame rails on this car are still very solid. So it's just the, the real thin sheet, sheet metal side of things that gets crusty, which is why these cars are still usually very savable, even when they're completely floorless. So, back to the structural stuff. Once you've made sure that you don't have Swiss cheese to work with, first, uh and you're good to go, one of the first problem areas in these cars where they start to flex is right here and right here. For whatever reason, there's a triangulated area right here. You just need a flat piece of metal to kind of triangulate this area in all the way around. And that really helps a lot of the firewall flex right down here at the bottom of the frame rails. Now, because the firewall itself is kind of thin, and there really is no major structure through here. This entire car relies on these frame rails through the rocker panels and the B-pillar to control 
everything. So all of this sheet metal bolted to the nose of this car is responsible for holding it together. Well, what do you do if you start twisting all that up? There's not a whole lot you can do except for brace it up. And there is no need for a strut tower bar because the way these cars flex and the way these cars are made, a strut tower bar from here to here won't do you any good. Um, there's no weight coming up through here uh, because they have upper and lower control arms. The only thing that's coming up through here is the shock load. However, shock load can cause flex between here and here real bad. So a brace usually between here and here and here and here, like a plate, uh, you can dimple dye it to get some of the weight out of it, is what the uh, rally cross guys do or any of the rally cars that you'll see that are competitive will have the uh, the braces here. There won't be anything going from here to the firewall and there won't be anything going from strut tower to strut tower because they brace it here in the corners and then they brace the sides. And this is mostly just to keep the sheet metal from tearing, especially if the shock bottoms out. They do that enough when they're stock. Uh, welding that all the way around also helps um, and these towers were originally spot welded in, so if you want to seam weld them in, that also helps. There is an area down here in the front, in the, or in the rear lower control arm area. Um, a lot of guys have to move this area to, to clear for uh, exhaust or whatnot on this side, this side of the car. Uh, so they've usually reconstructed this area and boxed it in. If not, this tends to flex. So some kind of a brace in here to flex, to keep the flex down helps. Same with down over here where it doesn't quite attach to the floor. A small piece in there and then fully welded usually helps. And then a bar. Um, you have the ground clearance. Make a bar that goes from here to here to keep the back and forth flex from happening. That'll also help stiffen up the side to side portions of the frame rail that this car does not have in it. You may have to kind of like go underneath your transmission or your oil pan back there, but that's a big help. Um, right here in this area this is another area that's really weak on the firewall. Um, a lot of times what they'll do on the race cars is they will plate all the way up to this line and then they will bring a triangle down to the bottom corner and you see where the frame rail starts to wrap around right here to basically triangulate this in with a box and that stiffens up both sides of the car right here and then if you wanted to then you could tie something between here and here and it would be stiff enough to take the to take a little bit more load off the shock tower <clears throat> as far as frame ties go Frame ties are really easy on these cars because the outer frame rail on these cars is the rocker panel. As it curves down inside the car here, you get a nice flat area all the way down through the car beside the seat and then through here and you have access to the rear frame rail. Some of you may already see where this is going. Some of you need a little bit more explanation. So what you're going to do is you're going to take something like some 2 by 3 square tubing. Um, you're going to cut that open right where it starts to go and curve. You're going to cut it into curve. You're going to cut it all the way open so you can slide your tube in there. You guys with the rusty wheel wells are going to end up needing... Uh, to have that come all the way out anyway. Um, otherwise, if it's solid, you're gonna wanna cut that open and bring that tube all the way out because you're gonna tie it structurally into everything and then plate that back over with some sheet steel. Um, I wish I had something to demonstrate with. I will address this again when I actually do the frame ties on one of these cars. But you're bringing that all the way through. You're opening up that frame rail right there and you're bringing it all the way through and then you're tying it in structurally to 
inside, which is why you have to open this so you can weld it. And then you're gonna weld it into that corner. And then you can bring that down right up against this inner rocker. You'll have to cut a little of the floor away so you can slide it down through because you want it on the back side of this. If you want it real strong, you're gonna want a nice tall frame rail right there. And you'll bring it back underneath and through the seat brace back here. So you'll have to open that up a little bit. And then right here is where you'll end it and you'll box it into the rear frame rail. Not only tying in the B pillar, but also the rear frame, keeping the entire car from twisting. And at that point, the only reason you would need a roll cage is to meet safety requirements because the car becomes extremely stiff. There's also one other advantage to tying it in back here, especially right there. You're going by two places that are a problem. The seat belt area for the bolt to attach and the lower control arm mount that's just spot welded to the floor. And you can see it's just several layers in this car it's like several layers of rust but it's several layers of metal uh, to build up a nice thick area on the floor and that does not support a lot of horsepower and a lot of abuse without pulling off the floor so um you can tie those into that because it runs right above it and then if you wanted to further the bracing you could run a brace from the inside to the inside on the other side. And then you have a built-in drive shaft loop area as well. Excuse the barking dogs. I have uh, the neighbor's puppies over there that are going to be my audience. But uh, right here you can see where the frame rail comes around the bottom and ends up part of the rocker panel at least until about here where the triple layer goes away and then it just becomes a single layer rocker panel, which is another reason why you're gonna use this whole area as a frame tie down through here. Because from here to here really is not structural at all. Um, but you can see where it passes right by your, your floor mounted trailing arm pivot. And then you can see where you have area to go across with bracing from side to side or you can just go straight across and then right here just put a loop in for your drive shaft it makes it really easy to tie these cars together there's just a small area right through here that you would cut the floors and a lot of these need fixed right through here anyway so but that will make your t-body and this pretty much applies for every single one of them. That will make your T-body about as stiff as it can actually get without putting a full cage in it. So, once I get ready to do that in one of these cars, I'll do a little bit more in-depth how-to. Uh, we'll probably break that up into several videos because there's going to be how to get into the frame rail, where to get into the frame rail, um, where to weld it, things like that. So, uh, in the meantime... I'm going to get back on the garage stuff. Uh, as soon as I get ready to do these spindles here, I'll be uh, doing the video on that. Uh, and then hopefully we're going to be getting Scooter finished up here real soon. So, in the meantime, you guys keep the shiny side up.